Now back to the latest developments coming out of Zimbabwe. Reports from that country suggest that the country's police are treating the country's former vice president, Pelegazela Mpoko, as a fugitive. He apparently fled before he could even be questioned by anti-corruption law enforcement officials. Mpoko served alongside current president, Emerson Nagagwa, when the former president, Robert Mugabe, was ousted by the military in November 2017. But Mpoko and Nagagwe have since fallen out. Mpoko's lawyer, Zibusiso Nube, has refuted those reports that Mpoko is a fugitive and he joins us now uh, on the line. A very good evening to you, Mr. Nube. Thank you so much for your time. First of all, where in the world is the former vice president? Good evening to you and uh, to your viewers. Uh, the former, former vice president is actually at home in Mlawayo, in Zimbabwe. Okay, do, do you have an idea then uh, where this accession that he's fleeing justice come from and why? Uh, say again, I beg your pardon on that. Do you have any idea where these accessions that he's actually fleeing justice is coming from and why? Oh, well, those are allegations from, um, I've seen it on social media, I've seen it on mainstream media as well. Uh, but you have to check the source uh, because whoever is saying that was not at court, whoever is said that is not involved in this matter directly. So... Those allegations are unfounded. Here's what happened. On, um, on Friday last week, we, I received a call from uh, one of the officials from ZAC, and um, they requested that we meet. I couldn't meet them on Friday because of the church camp meeting. We agreed to then meet on a Sunday. Well, I proposed that we meet on Sunday. They couldn't take that proposal because they were going to go back to Harare. And uh, we then agreed that we'll meet them in Harare on Monday. Um, later on in the evening, after they, they stormed the, 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 the former, former vice president's uh, place of residence, they came back to me and said, we'll meet in Blauai on Monday. So we did meet in Blauai on Monday. I explained that uh, my client, the former VP, had serious reservations on his security. And um, he had intel to the effect that um, he was going to be either be abducted or injected with some lethal poison. So we agreed that um, whatever clarification they needed on, on, on the issues that they were talking about, I'll give them that, uh, the, the clarification. And I did that. It was then agreed that we meet at court, directly at court on, um, um, later on during the day. So when we went to, to the court uh, to the courthouse, I uh, was approached by a few officers outside court in the parking lot, and they indicated that they were changed plans, and we are now meant to go to the police station. Now that didn't fit too well with my client, and um, I had to get into the building, the court building, uh, to verify with the senior why there was a change of plan. So up until we, we, we could resolve or verify the, the, the reason for the change of plan, there was no need to have the VP uh, around. So the VP went back home. The former VP went back home. Okay, but uh, from what we are gathering, uh, when the agreement was made that uh, Mr. Mpogo meets with officials from the Zimbabwe Anti-Corruption Commission at a police post at the magistrate's court, well, for obviously for the, uh, you know, the, the warned and cautioned statement, Upon hearing that there was an instruction uh, to detain him, he, he simply drove away at high speed. So where is this getting from and where is this instruction ostensibly coming from? Okay, um, I don't know the source really, but that's not, that is not the agreement. The agreement is what I told you. A warning question was going to be signed somewhere at, uh, at, at Treadwell Building. All right, that's the Manchester Court Building. The change in the plans was that we were now meant to go to the police station. And I had been categorical in my, in my, in my explanation to the official that we, we didn't want to have anything to do with pre-trial incarceration, either at the police cells, the prison cells, or whatever cells, okay? The suggestion came um, later on from me, in fact, that... If it's about the police station that uh, the officials were interested in, we could actually utilize the police post at uh, the court building. So that suggestion came to me, came from me after the VP had left. 
because we needed to clarify with um, the lead investigating officer as to why there was a change of plan. So is he willing so is, to appear in court then to face those charges? The, the, the VP is not a fugitive at law. The VP did not flee. It's impossible. Let me explain something here. The former VP, by virtue of being former VP, he still, he still has security, state security, that's in the form of um, uh, members of the Republic Police at his residence, guarding his residence 24 hours a day, seven days a week. When he's traveling, like we're traveling uh, from, from, from my office, for instance, to Trade Gold Court, we had security details from the CIO, all right? He's assigned security personnel. So how on earth will they, will they flee? Yet he's got security personnel. So it doesn't make sense. That whole, that, that whole story is just self-defeating. Of contradictory. You've got security agents that are assigned to the former VP. They travel with him to any place. If ever they needed to stop him, they would have just activated their, their, their contacts and said, can you stop the VP? The VP just drove, drove, drove home because... But Mr. Had, Nube, is he prepared then to, to appear in court to face those charges? Oh, yes. We, we've been clear. I mean, from the word go, we've been clear that um, as soon as the state is ready, that is, the prosecution is ready. What is he likely to be so charged with then? Clouded. What is he likely to yeah, be charged yeah. with? Oh, no, he's been charged with um, contravening section 174 of the court and contravening section, in the alternative, contravening section 84. That's um, section 174 is criminal abuse of office and section 84, which is the alternative, uh, obstructing or defeating the cost of justice. And you were quoted by a South African online publication that uh, Mr. Mpoko uh, feared that if he was detained, he was to be in injected with a, a poisonous substance. Where is this coming from? Yes, so, yes so, that was my instructions, and he got that from his impeccable sources. He got that intel from his impeccable sources. All right. By the way, let me say this again. Yeah, just briefly. I did... I did indicate to the, I did make contact with the chairperson of ARZAC, uh, that's um, the Honorable uh, Mrs. Justice Matanda Moyo, and I raised this concern. I, 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 we, have, we have found each other, we have reached uh, a consensus of some sort, and I'm certain that um, come tomorrow morning, we should be in a position to have a way forward in the matter. All right, Mr. Nube, we thank you for your time. We really appreciate it. That was uh, Mr. Zibusiso Nube, who is representing uh, the former Vice President of Zimbabwe, Pelegazela, Mr. Pelegazela Mpoko.